In this free video course, you will learn everything you need to know about stock market trading. Whether you are interested in short-term trading or long-term investing, this course covers it all. By the end of this course, you will not only be able to trade and invest like a pro, but you will also learn about multiple stock trading techniques that most people don't know about. All right, so let's begin this video by taking a look at what you can expect to learn from this course. And the very first thing we're gonna take a look at is some stock market basics. In order to trade stocks effectively, we of course need to know, you know, for example, what a stock even is in the first place. We need to have a basic understanding of how the stock market works. And we're also gonna take a look at some basic stock market terms that you need to know. After we know about some stock market basics, it's time to take a look at some different trading styles and trading techniques. So for example, what is the difference between fundamental analysis and technical analysis? What is day trading and what is swing trading? And we will also take a look at some investing styles like investing in value stocks and growth stocks. In chapter three, I will give you guys a step-by-step -step introduction to TradingView. And TradingView is basically an all-in-one trading and investing platform. And as you guys might have noticed, I actually just recently received this nice uh, hoodie from TradingView. And just to be clear, this video is not sponsored or anything, but I do have a special link that will be both in the top of the description and the pin comment that you can use to get a free trial for 30 days. And you can also get a $15 bonus if you eventually decide that you want to upgrade your plan. But all right, so after the TradingView introduction, we're gonna take a look at some stock brokers because TradingView is basically the platform where you do all your analysis. Whether it is technical analysis or fundamental analysis, TradingView has all the tools you need, whether you are a beginner or more advanced trader, but to actually trade the stocks, we need to have a stock broker. And some of these stock brokers, you can actually connect to TradingView. So you can trade inside TradingView for some stock brokers or another strategy uh, commonly used is that you have one separate stock broker, you do your analysis on TradingView. You might, for example, have two screens where you have a stock broker on one screen where you execute your trades, and then you have TradingView on another screen where you do your analysis. So there are multiple different options here. And I will, in a simple manner, go over some stock brokers. Next up in chapter five, we're gonna take a look at technical analysis. Technical analysis is basically when you analyze charts and make trading decisions based on how the price moves. But we will also take a quick look at something called fundamental analysis as well. Fundamental analysis is more about analyzing the actual stocks. So how are the companies actually performing? You look at things like balance sheets, income statements. Some traders using fundamental analysis also do sort of broader uh, macro analysis as well. But in this course, we will quickly cover both fundamental and technical analysis. And what you actually also can do here, some traders actually have a combined approach. So they use both fundamental and technical analysis in their trading strategy. All right, so before we continue here, I want to give a big shout out to all our new channel members. You guys are making these videos possible. I spend a lot of time and effort on these videos, so if you want to give back while at the same time getting access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a channel member by clicking join below this video or on the channel page. Now let's jump back into the course. All right, so now let's take a look at some stock market basics. And the very first question we have to ask ourselves is of course, what is a stock? And in very simple terms, a stock, or in other words, a share, these two words are, are usually used uh, interchangeably. So you can, you know, a stock and a share is basically the same thing. But a stock is basically a share of ownership. So when you buy a stock, you are basically buying a small piece of a company or business. And this will mean that you actually own, you are the owner of a small piece of that company. So to demonstrate this, I want you all to take a look at this image right here. 
This is an example when we have a small business and the amount of stocks in this business is represented by this circle right here. In this example, you can see that we only have three, six, we have 12 stocks. This is not really realistic because, because in public companies, you will usually have you know millions or even billions of stocks. But let's say that you buy one stock in this company. So let's say that you buy this piece right here. After buying this piece, since we only have a total of 12 stocks, this means that you will own one twelfth of the company. So if the company makes a profit, you will basically own one twelfth of the profit. Sometimes this profit will actually be distributed to you right away. This is what we call dividend. Sometimes the company will reinvest the money and so on and so on. And we will talk more about that later on in this course. But for now, all you need to know is that a stock is basically a piece of ownership in a company. So another thing we need to know about stocks is that stocks are traded on stock markets. So stocks are basically, you know, bought and sold all the time. So every single second, you know, millions of stocks are bought and sold all over the world. And where are they bought and sold? Well, the transactions happens on what we call stock exchanges. And some examples are the NYSE, which stands for New York Stock Exchange. And NASDAQ is another common a stock exchange. So you can basically think about this as marketplaces for stocks. And since you are watching this video, you're probably curious, you know, how do we make money trading stocks? Well, we have multiple different methods here. The most, you know, easy one to understand is that you can make a profit by stock price increases. So you can profit when the stock price goes up. So if you buy a stock at 100, you sell it at 200, you make $100 in profit. And this right here is what is called going long. But when you trade stocks, you can also make money from the stock price going down. So you can make money from stock price decreases. Um, and this right here is what is called going short. And this is one thing that is, you know, sort of beautiful about trading. You can make money when the price goes up, but you can also make money when the price goes down. And last but not least, let's say that a stock goes sideways. You can actually still make money. How can you make money? Well, you can make money from dividends. This is basically when the business, like for example, this business right here, makes money and some companies will distribute their profits to the shareholders. So even if a stock goes sideways, you can make money from dividends. All right, so now when you know what a stock is, now we are ready to learn about some more basic, but very important stock market terms. And the first term, let's just repeat here, uh, is a stock. And a stock is a small piece of ownership in a company. The next term is also a bit of rep repetition here, but a stock market is a marketplace where stocks are bought and sold. Next up, we have the term broker. And in simple terms, you can think about a broker as a service that helps you buy and sell stocks. Just as you, for example, you need help if you want to sell your house or real estate, you also need help to sell your stocks. You need uh, a service that helps uh, you, uh, let's say you wanna sell a stock, then you need help for you to find a buyer of your stock. So that is basically what a broker is. The next term here uh, I wanna talk about is stock portfolio. And this is in simple terms, the total collection of all the stocks you own. So let's say that you own some Apple, some Nvidia and some Tesla. All of these three stocks together would make up your stock portfolio. Next up, we have a term called volatility. And volatility is a word you might have heard and it's talked about a lot in the trading world. And volatility it's, is basically how much and how quickly the price of a stock or other asset like cryptocurrency or Forex changes. So let's say that we have two charts right here. Here we have chart one 
and here we have chart two. Um, a case of you know low volatility, we can demonstrate like this. You can see the price, you know, only moves a little here. We don't really have sharp price increases or sharp uh, price decreases while a volatile market would look more something like this. You can see even though both of these uh, markets, you can see on average, they move the same. You can see the average price here, if this right here is a moving average, uh, which is a technical indicator we will talk about more later on in this course, uh, but you can see they move on average the same, but the you know actual price movements are much more sharp and stronger in a volatile market. The next term I wanna mention here is a term called market order. And a market order is a simple request to buy or sell a stock immediately at the current market price. So if Tesla is right now trading at $200 and you place a buy market order, then you will simply buy Tesla at $200. It's a pretty simple term. The next term I do wanna mention here is a term called IPO, which stands for Initial Public Offering. And this right here is when a company sells uh, its stock to the public for the very first time. So if you wonder, you know, how does, you know, a stock sort of appear in the stock market? Well, in order to appear in the stock market, you need to sell your stocks for the first time. And this is what is called an IPO. Yet another term I wanna mention that is super, super common uh, and important to understand is bull market. And a bull market is a period where the stock prices are trending up. Or in other words, a period where stock prices on average are moving to the upside. And the other term here, also very common, is bear market. And a bear market is basically a period where stock prices are trending down. But all right, so now we know about some important, you know, stock market definitions and basics. Now it's time to take a quick look at how the stock market works. And as you can see on the screen right here, I have the S&P 500 chart. And the S&P 500 is what we call a stock market index. And the reason it's called S&P 500 here is because this index is basically, you can think about it as a basket of stocks. And in this particular basket or in this particular index, we have 500 of the largest companies in the US. So by looking at this index, this particular chart starts all the way back here in 1960. By looking at this chart, we can basically see how the stock market have performed as a whole. So when the S&P 500 is going up, so you can think about it as that the stock market is going up on average. So now then, what is the main purpose of the stock market? Well, the main purpose is basically to connect buyers and sellers. So the stock market brings together people who want to buy stocks with people who want to sell them. That's the main goal of the stock market. And what makes stock prices move? Well, the force behind all stock market movements is what we call supply and demand. And in very simple terms, more buyers than sellers leads to a price increase, which we call demand, and more sellers than buyers lead to a price decrease that we call supply. This right here is a very simplified explanation, but if you want to dive deeper, I actually have a full course on supply and demand here on the channel. So I will make sure to link that video somewhere up in the corner, and I do recommend to watch that video after this course. And what about market indices? Well, we have already mentioned one of the most popular and most famous stock market index, but let's just repeat here. What the stock market index basically does is that it's tracking the market performance. So indices like, for example, the S&P 500 measure the overall performance of a group of stocks. And they do this to provide an overall view of the market. All right, so now let's switch the attention a little bit and take a look at the different actors that participate 
in the stock market, or in other words, stock market participants. We have something called retail investors, we have something called smart money, and we also have something called market makers. So let's take a look at all of these different actors. So who trade in the stock market? First of all, we have the retail investors. And retail investors are basically everyday people like me and you uh, who buy and sell stocks to build personal wealth. The next category here is what is often referred to as smart money. And another word for this is institutional investors. So, and these actors are pretty different from me and you because these actors are large organizations like for example banks and hedge funds that invest large, very large sums of money. And one important uh, aspect about the smart money is that they often have more resources and information compared to us retail investors. And when I talk about resources, I both talk about, you know, simple labor, they have more people, you know, working. And they often also have more advanced tools and access to more data compared to retail investors. So it can be easy to just think that you know smart money will always have uh, the upper hand compared to the retail investors. But there are actually a few uh, there are a few benefits of being a smaller trader as well. For example. Uh, smart money and institutional investors will often be a bit restricted to what markets and what time frames they can trade on. They often have much more rules and you know if they have large amounts of capital many uh, institutional investors can't really trade super small stocks and so on and so on. So it doesn't have to be a bad thing to be a retail investor. But now then the Final market participant I want to talk about is something called market makers. And market makers are basically firms or in some rare cases individuals that provide liquidity in the market. And liquidity is basically how easy it is to buy and sell a stock. So they provide liquidity to ensure that there are always buyers and sellers for stock. And this makes the market function in a more smooth manner. All right then, so now I wanna take a look at some different styles of trading stocks. And to be specific, we're gonna take a look at day trading, swing trading, and investing. So what does this term mean? And how are they different and similar? Let's start here by taking a look at day trading. And in simple terms, day trading is basically when you buy and sell within the same day. So a day trader might buy and then sell just, you know, 10 minutes later, or they can buy and sell maybe two hours later. But the important aspect about day trading is that you buy and sell within the same day. So you don't hold your position overnight. You always execute your trades within the same day. And the risk level when it comes to day trading is often pretty high because in order to be successful in day trading, you will need a high skill level. Day traders often take multiple trades every day and every time you buy and sell a stock, you actually need to pay some fees. So you will often have quite a bit of fees when you day trade. So, so in order to both cover the fees and on top of that, make extra money, you really need to know what you're doing in order to uh, be consistently profitable in day trading. When it comes to the strategy day traders use, it's most often technical analysis. And later on in this course, we will talk more about technical analysis. But it can be worth to mention here that some day traders also specialize on trading on news as well. Uh, but the most common strategy is technical analysis. And what about the time investment? So how much time do you, do you need to put in in order to become a day trader? Well, the time investment here is actually very high. 
First of all, in order to simply day trade, you often need to spend multiple hours every single day in front of the chart. But it's also worth mentioning here that you need to spend a lot of time learning as well. The next type of trading stocks is called swing trading. And what is swing trading? Well, swing trading is, you know, when you have a longer time frame, you have a longer time horizon compared to day trading. So here you might be holding a stock for days or weeks, sometimes even months, but usually, you know, days to weeks. And as you can see on this image right here, this image right here basically demonstrates the difference here between day traders and swing traders. As you can see, day traders here, buy and sell, but the time frame here is intraday, meaning that they buy and sell within the same day, while swing traders buy and sell, while the time frame here can be, you know, days to weeks. And what about the risk level? Well, for swing trading, I would still say that the risk level is high, but one could argue here that the risk level is lower than day trading. And why could we argue that the risk is perhaps lower than day trading? Well, one reason for this is that we will usually have a lower frequency of trades. So we will not execute as many trades, which leads to, you know, lower fees. But in my opinion, another reason for what I would say a lower risk level is because when you execute swing trades, you often have, you know, much more time to think. And this can also lead to sort of calmer and more thought out trades and decisions. I would say it's much more common to make sort of technical mistakes when it comes to day trading compared to swing trading. So I would actually say that swing trading is a bit lower risk here. As for the strategy, the most common method when it comes to swing trading, I would say is technical analysis but you can also use fundamental analysis. And don't worry, later on in this course, we will talk more about, about both technical and fundamental analysis. And as I already mentioned, an approach where you combine both of these is also a possible strategy. But now then, what about the time investment for swing trading? Well, I would say that the time investment is medium. It's definitely lower compared to day trading. When you swing trade, you might not even trade every day. You might take a few trades every week or something like that. So usually you don't need to spend many hours trading. You might you know, want to monitor your positions. So you perhaps check the market when it opens and when it closes for the day. Perhaps on some days you spend a little bit of more time while on some days you spend no time at all. So from that perspective, the time investment is definitely medium. But we also need to consider something else. We need to consider, you know, how much time does it take to learn swing trading? And this, I would definitely say, is high. One could argue that it, it's not as high uh, to learn swing trading than day trading, but it's still, you know, a long journey, a long process. So, you know, the time investment for learning is definitely still high. But now then, last but definitely not least, let's also take a look at investing here. So what is investing? Well, when it comes to investing, the time frame is usually that you hold stocks for months or most of the time even years. So when you buy something, you really buy it to hold it for a long time. And because of this, I would say that the risk level is definitely lower here for long-term investing. Because on average, you know, on average for a long time, the stock market has been going up. Yes, you will have some years where the stock market is going down, but if you really zoom out, you know, at least, you know, the last 100 years or so, the stock market has always been able to recover. So if you plan to buy and hold for a long time, um, you can usually make money over time. Of course, uh, you know, individual, some individual stocks will fall and some stocks even go all the way down to zero. But if you invest in say an index like the S&P 500, uh, it's definitely, you know, much lower risk compared to both day trading and swing trading. And what about the strategy here? Well, when it comes to investing, it's 
much more common to use, you know, fundamental analysis. So if you are planning to invest in individual stocks, the most common method is to analyze how the stocks are performing and then you make educated guesses on how the stocks will perform financially in the future. So fundamental analysis is definitely the most common method here. And if you are investing in, for example, a fund like, you know, based on the S&P 500, many people don't even analyze at all. They simply buy because, you know, the stock market tends to go up over time. So if you don't plan to spend much time simply investing in, like, for example, the S&P 500, you can invest in an S&P 500 ETF or something similar. That is often, a, you know, relatively low risk level and relatively high reward, which don't require a lot of time. So I would say that the time investment is low to medium. If you don't want to spend a lot of time, you can de definitely invest successfully by spending little to no time. Perhaps you, you know, look at your por portfolio uh, once in a while, maybe once a week, maybe once a month. But if you really like investing and want to dive deeper into individual stocks, individual companies, then the time investment can, of course, go up. So that is what I say, low to medium. Some investors can spend as much time as day traders, but that is definitely more rare than not. All right, so now it's finally time to take a look at the two main techniques when it comes to analyzing charts. And I'm talking about fundamental analysis and technical analysis. And let's begin here by taking a look at fundamental analysis. What is fundamental analysis? Well, the strategy here is to evaluate a company's financial health, uh, business model, and also growth potential. And how is this done? What are the important tools fundamental analysts use here? Well, we use tools like uh, financial statements, for example, income statements, uh, balance sheets. Uh, we also analyze things like, you know, cash flow. But fundamental analysts can also look at other economic indicators and economic factors. They can look at some macro metrics like, you know, inflation, employment numbers and so on. And another thing to pay attention to is news reports and also news for the companies they analyze. And what about the goal for fundamental analysis? Well, it's basically to determine the intrinsic value of a stock to identify long-term investment opportunities. So fundamental analysis is much more long-term or at least often much more long-term compared to technical analysis. But now then, what about technical analysis? Well, the strategy for technical analysis is very different. What we do in technical analysis is that instead of studying how the actual company performs, we study how the price has moved for that company. So we look at price movements, we look at trading volume and so on and so on to predict future price movements. So we basically study past price movements to predict future price movements. And what are some key tools for technical analysis? Well, we use tools like patterns, we use trading indicators, like for example, the moving average, the RSI and the MACD indicator. And we also use other concepts like, for example, price action and market structure. And the goal here with technical analysis is to identify short term trading opportunities based on our technical analysis. So to repeat here, fundamental analysis is all about looking how the actual company performs, while technical analysis is all about analyzing how the price moves. And we basically take advantage of the sort of psychology behind price movements. For example, if you know, a stock is you know, increasing a lot, it's going up a lot, this can basically lead to you know, more and more people getting interested in the stock and even buying the stock only because it's performing so well. And that is the concept we take advantage of as technical traders. But now then, let's actually take a look at two of the most common and most important types of investing. And here we're gonna take a look at growth investing versus value investing. 
So first of all, what is growth investing? Well, the strategy when it comes to growth investing is basically to buy stocks of companies that are expected to grow rapidly in the future. But how can we know if a stock is expected to grow rapidly? Well, there are a few key characteristics we can look out for here. And one key characteristic is that growth companies often reinvest the profit instead of paying out the dividends. So what growth companies often focus on is that instead of, you know, paying out the money to investors, they instead reinvest the profit in, for example, new or better products or services to grow more and faster in the future. And what do we need to look out for here when we are looking out for growth stocks? Well, there are tons of different metrics and tools here we can look out for, but some examples are, of course, revenue growth. This is basically why it's called growth investing. We're looking out for companies with strong revenue growth. Another metric to look out for here is earnings per share or for short EPS. And another key, key metric here is something called forward price to earnings ratio. And the price to earnings ratio here is basically when you take the price of a stock and divide it with the earnings per share or for short EPS. So you can think about the PE ratio as how much are we actually paying for the earnings that the companies produce. And the forward PE ratio here is basically the PE that is expected in the future. So that is a key metric to look out for. And what about the goal here? Well, the goal for growth investing is pretty simple. You want to increase your money by selling stocks at higher prices in the future. But now then, what about value investing? Well, the strategy for value investing is a bit different compared to growth investing. Here, the strategy is basically to buy stocks of companies that are currently undervalued. And the key characteristics of value stocks are basically, you know, stable companies that already has, uh, you know, consistent earnings and value stocks often pay out dividends. So by holding value stocks, you can actually make money even if the price is going sideways. And what are we looking out for here when we're looking out for value stocks? Well, one thing to look out for is a low PE ratio. And as we talked about earlier, the PE ratio is basically price divided by earnings. So preferably we want this ratio to be as low as possible. Another metric we can look out for is something called price to book. And this right here is basically the price of a stock divided by the book value. And you can basically think about the book value as the assets that a company has. So assets can be things like physical assets, like, you know, factories and machines. But assets can also be something called intangible assets. These are basically things that makes a company valuable, even though it's not something physical. So this could, for example, be, you know, patents and legal rights to, for example, produce a specific invention or product or something called goodwill. And goodwill is basically the sort of premium value a company has due to its, you know, reputation or customer base. So for example, one factor that makes Apple very valuable is that, you know, pretty much everyone knows about Apple and it has, you know, a huge customer base already. Apple basically has one of the most valuable and recognizable brands in the world and a super loyal uh, customer base. And this leads to high goodwill. But now then, what about the goal with value investing? Well, the goal here is to find stocks that are priced lower than their sort of true value or intrinsic value and then basically wait for the market to recognize their worth. And as a result, the price will go up. But all right then, so at this point in the course, you have a good understanding of what stock trading is. And you also know about different methods to trade and analyze stocks. So now it's finally time to take a look at the only platform you need for all things trading and investing. And that platform is called TradingView. 
And what is the purpose of TradingView? Why do you want to use TradingView? Well, the main purpose here is to analyze charts and different metrics to basically find the best times to buy and sell stocks. And what about the rating here? Well, in my opinion, and also according to their website, uh, TradingView is the number one platform when it comes to all things trading. So for example, TradingView currently has more than 60 million users and it has more than 1.5 million mobile reviews with a 4.9 rating. So, you know, this rating is amazing. And some of the key features when it comes to TradingView, and this is just a few of the key features, TradingView, as I have already mentioned, basically has everything you need. But it has multiple comprehensive tools. To be more precise, we have more than 400 indicators and strategies for both technical and fundamental analysis. Another key feature here is that the charts are very customizable. So you can build and customize the chart. You can change pretty much everything to fit your trading style. Another key feature here is that TradingView has a great stock screener. And a stock screener is basically a tool to help you filter out the best stocks to trade. So you can filter based on so many different criteria. And we will take a look at the stock screener later on in this course but just some criteria are price, volume, and other types of performance metrics. And last but not least guys, for this video, I have managed to get a special link. The link will be both in the top of the description as well as the pinned comment. And you can use this link to get 30 day access to all features and get a $15 bonus if you eventually decide that you want to upgrade from the free to the paid plan. All right, so now guys, let's jump right into TradingView and take a look at how to get started step by step. All right, so step number one here is that you want to head down to the description of this video or the top comment and you want to press on this link right here. The reason you want to use this link is because you will receive a $15 bonus if you later on decide that you want to upgrade to a paid plan. But for now, we can go up here and cross out this window. So now the first thing you need to know about TradingView is that as you can see, TradingView is completely free. And if you are a complete beginner when it comes to trading, I actually recommend to start off with this free plan. Or another option here is to go for one of the 30 days free trials here. So you can either sign up completely for free or try out TradingView Premium for 30 days. One thing that is really nice about all the paid plans here is that as you can see, you will have no annoying ads. You will be able to have multiple indicators per chart and you will also get access to some important features we will cover in this video. Like for example, the bar replay, multiple watch lists and multiple charts per tab. So to sign up, either press this button right here or go for one of the free trials. Since I'm personally using TradingView Premium, I'm gonna simply press here to sign up. So now the sign up process is simple and straightforward. You can, for example, sign up using your Google account or email or any of these options like Facebook or X. And I'm simply gonna sign up using Google. Next, you just follow the simple sign up process. And just like that, we have our TradingView account and we are ready to get started. When you first log into TradingView, it will look something like this. On the main page, you can see that we have a quick market summary of some of the largest markets here. You can, for example, see that right now we're looking at the S&P 500 we have been talking about earlier in the course. And down here, you can see that this chart represents one day. And up here, you can see that during the last day, the S&P 500 fell by 0.30%. Here on the front page, we also have some other markets like the NASDAQ 100, which actually went up by 0.5% during the last day. We have the Dow 30, which is another US index. Here, Nikkei uh, 225 is the Japanese market. We have a quick overview here. And here we have the British market as well. But now then, the very first question you might be asking now is of course, how do I find stocks to trade? And this right here is pretty simple. What you want to do here is that you want to go up to where it says products right here, and then you want to press on super charts. And now as you can see, a chart has appeared here in TradingView. 
But what chart is this? Well, to see what chart you're looking at, you basically go up here to the upper left corner. And as you can see, we're currently looking at Apple. You can also see that it says 1D right here. And that means that we're looking at a daily chart. Or in other words, every candlestick on this chart represents one day of price movement. Later on in this course, we will take a look at how to change the time frame. But first of all, let's take a look at how to change the chart to another stock. So to do this, we want to go up here to the upper left corner once again, and want to click on this button right here. To find stocks, you want to delete this right here. You want to press on the stocks button right here. And as you can see, now multiple different stocks will appear here in a list. But now then, let's say we want to open up the Coca-Cola chart. What we can do here is simply search for Coca-Cola. And as you can see, when we search for this, multiple different Coca-Cola stocks appear. And this is because this method of searching for a stock is not really the best way. What we want to do to find the exact stock we're looking out for is that we want to search for the ticker symbol of Coca-Cola. And the ticker symbol of Coca-Cola is KO. So as you can see, when we search for KO right here, you can see that the one appearing at the top is the correct Coca-Cola stock. But what about if you don't know the ticker symbol? Well, what you basically do is that you Google the stock. So for example, you Google Coca-Cola and then ticker symbol. So let's say we want to open up NVIDIA. What we simply do is that we Google the NVIDIA uh, ticker symbol, which is NVDA. So to open up NVIDIA, we simply search for NVDA. And as you can see, the stock will appear right here. So let's open up NVIDIA. But now the next thing we of course need to understand is, you know, how do we read this chart? And currently we're looking at a chart type called a candlestick chart. And this is by far the most common chart type. And this is the chart type I recommend especially beginners to use here. But if your chart for some reason doesn't have candlesticks, in order to find candlesticks, what you want to do here is that you want to go up here to the upper left corner and you want to press on this symbol right here. And as you can see here, we have multiple different chart types. So for example, right here, if we press on this one right here, you can see that a simple line chart will appear. But I actually don't recommend to use a line chart and you will soon understand why. So let's once again, go up to the same button here and go down and press on the candlestick chart. Now let's take a moment here to learn about how to read and how to understand a candlestick chart. So what I'm going to do here is that I zoom in a bit here. Uh, I'm using my scroll wheel to zoom in and I use my mouse. I'm holding in my left click here to drag around the chart and I use my scroll wheel here to zoom in. But let's take a look at how to actually read these candles. So first of all, as you can see, we have two different types of candles. We have a green candle and we have a red candle. What the green candle basically tell us is that during this candle, the price has been going up. And what a red candle tells us is that during this candle, the price has been going down. So for the green candle, the price started right here. And remember, right now we're looking at a daily chart, which means that every candlestick on this chart represents one day. So for this green candle, the price at the start of the day was down here. And then during the day, the price went up. And when the day ended, the price was all the way up here. But now you might wonder, what about this small line below the candle? And what about this small line above the candle? Well, these two lines that are called wicks represents the highest price and the lowest price the stock reached during that day. So for this green candle, the stock reached a lowest price all the way down here. It reached a highest price all the way up here. But remember, the price started at this level. And when the day closed, we were right here. And the point where the price started is known as the open. The lowest price is known as the low. The highest price is known as the high. And the price where the day ended is known as the close. And the exact same thing, but the opposite is true for the red candle. So for this red candle right here, remember that a red candle means that the price goes down during the candle. So in this case, the price started or opened right here and the price closed down here. So when the day ended, the price was down here. But during the day, it reached a highest point all the way up here. 
and a lowest point all the way down there. So this is basically how to read and understand the candlesticks. But all right, so now let's zoom out a bit here. And as you can see here to the right of the chart, we have the price. And here below the chart, we have the dates. So to read what level the price is at currently, you simply go to the right here and you can see that Nvidia is currently trading at around 107. But if you want to look at what did Nvidia trade at here in the beginning of August, we basically go to this candle right here. We go up to that candle and we can see that at the end of the day on August 1st, the price traded at around $109. So now let's just quickly take a look at how to navigate and move around the chart in an effective manner. So to, first of all, to just move around, what you do is that you hold your left click and move the chart like this. And to zoom uh, horizontally, you use your mouse scroll wheel and to zoom on the other axis, you basically hold with your left click on the price sidebar like this. So this is how I move around. I use my scroll wheel like this. I move around like this. I drag the chart and move the scales here at the same time. This is a very sort of effective manner to quickly move around the charts. What you also can do, if you move down here to the bottom right corner, you can see that we have a button called A right here. This will be basically make the data fit automatically to the screen. So if I press this button A right here, you can see that as we move around, you can see the chart will zoom in and out to sort of fit the screen. But personally, I don't like this option, so I'm gonna uncheck this one. I like to be able to sort of move in and out more freely when I navigate the charts. But all right, guys, so now let's actually head back here to the home screen. To do this, we press on this button in the upper left corner and we press on home. Because now I want to show you guys the TradingView stock screener. This is a tool you can use to find the best stocks to trade. Uh, it doesn't matter if you use technical analysis or fundamental analysis. You can use this tool to filter stocks on all kinds of metrics. And to find this tool, you wanna go up here to the products tab right here. Then you wanna head down to screeners and you wanna go up here where it says stocks. And now, as you can see, a list of all the different stocks has appeared here. And right here, you can see that we have a few different metrics we can use to filter stocks. And the filter we are right now using is the market cap. The market cap is basically the total value of a company. And as you can see, the most valuable stock right now is Apple with a market cap of 3.3 trillion. Just below, we have Microsoft with a market cap of 3 trillion. And at third place, we actually have Nvidia with a, markets, uh, with a market cap of around 2.6 trillion. And up here in the upper left corner, you can see that we are currently looking at the US market. If you want to change the market, you simply press on this button right here. And since I'm from Sweden, let's say I wanna look at the Swedish market. So here we have some common markets, but we can press on this more markets button right here to find any market. So if we, for example, search for Sweden here, you can see that we can choose Sweden. Then we press on apply. And now, as you can see, only Swedish companies will appear. Currently, we're using once again the market cap filter. But right now, you can see the market cap is currently filtered based on SEEK. And that is the Swedish currency. So the biggest company in Sweden right now is AstraZeneca, which has a market cap of around 2.7 trillion SEEK but one SEEK is only around one-tenth of a US dollar. So this company is only about one-tenth of the size compared to Nvidia, which had a market cap of around $2.7 trillion. But all right, so now let's actually head back to the US market, because now I want to show you guys how to find the best stocks to trade by combining multiple filters. So as you can see, all of these different boxes up here are different filters we can apply to find our stocks. And these are actually not all the filters. If you go right here and press on the plus sign, add a new filter, you can see right here that we have even more filters, like for example, technical analysis tools that we can apply to all stocks. But now let's take a look at how this works. First of all, let's say that we wanna look at the US market. And 
what we then can choose is a specific index in the US market. So we can, for example, choose the S&P 500, NASDAQ or Dow Jones, but let's actually choose the S&P 500 here. So now only stocks on the S&P 500 will appear here. And now let's say here that we are only interested in stocks in a certain sector. To change the sector, we basically press on this button right here. And let's say here that we're looking out for stocks that are electronic technology. So we press right here. And the more filters we apply, the less stocks will appear here on the chart. So now we're looking at, you know, the electronic technology sector. But let's actually also filter, let's say we want to filter on revenue growth. To do this, we basically press on this button right here. And as you can see, you can choose some pre-made filter, for example, 50 and above. This is an amazing growth. You can choose 25 and above, 10 and below, and so on and so on. And for all of these filters, if you want to create your own filter, you can go down to this button where it says manual setup. So let's press on this button right here. So as you can see, now we have revenue growth and the first setting here, it stands for TTM. TTM basically stands for trailing 12 months. So we're looking at the growth here in the last 12 months. And here we can choose, you know, if we want it to be above or below. Let's say that we're looking for a company with above and here we can choose the value. Let's say that we're looking for a company with growth of 15% and more. So we choose 15 here in the lowest box and then we press on apply. So now, as you can see, we don't have too many stocks left here. It's getting less and less, uh, but let's apply some even more filters. And for the next filter, let's actually add a new filter. Here you can see that we have, you know, filters based on market data. We have technical analysis tools, financials, dividends, and so on and so on. Uh, but here, let's actually add a technical filter. So let's pre press on technicals here. So now we are basically combining fundamental analysis and technical analysis. And what technical filter do we want to add? Let's just choose a common one. Let's choose the relative strength index. And now let's choose the settings. The most common settings for the ATR is to use a period of 14 and, and let's make the calculations be based on one day. So let's add this filter right here. Now we wanna go up to the RSI and here we can choose to filter the stocks based on the RSI value. And for the RSI, when stocks are 30 or below, we say that the stocks are oversold and when the RSI is 70 and above, we say that the stocks are overbought. Let's in this case, look for stocks that are oversold. So we choose the 30 and below right here. And now, as you can see, when we combine all of these filters, we only have one stock left here, which in this case was SMCI or super micro computer. But now the filter combination I just recently showed you guys was pretty random. I just combined some different filters to show you guys how this stock screener works. But hopefully by now you have a basic understanding of how to combine the different filters here. And now you might wonder, how do I reset all my filters? Maybe I don't want to use these filters anymore. Well, what you do is that you go up to the upper left corner, you press right here and you press on revert to default screen. If you want to save this particular filter, you can press on save changes, but for now I'm gonna click on don't save. But all right, so now you know how to apply filters, but as you can see, we have some other sort of options right here. The first tab where we are right now is the basic overview tab where you can look at things like price, the price change of the last day. You can take a look at the volume, the relative volume and so on and so on. So this gives you a nice overview of the market. Uh, if you want to look at the performance, you click on the performance right here. And as you can see on this tab, we have the price, but we also have the price change over the last day, the last week, month, three months, and so on and so on. So here you can get a really good 
sort of long-term and short-term view at the same time. Uh, if you, for example, look at NVIDIA right here, you can, for example, see that NVIDIA has lost around 11-12% in the last week. But if you look at a longer-term perspective, you can see that NVIDIA has been going up by 121% in one year. And if you, for example, look at 10 years, you can see that NVIDIA has been going up with more than 21,000%. We also have some other tools. We have extended hours, which is how the stocks are basically trading outside the normal trading hours. And um, you also have valuation here. So here you can find many important metrics related to the valuation of the companies. One such met uh, metric we have been talking about earlier in the course is the PE ratio. We have the PE growth ratio here. Uh, and here, for example, we have the price to book that we have been talking about earlier. Uh, on this tab, you can basically find all kinds of financials, which are very important if you are a fundamental analysis trader. And here, guys, this stock screener is just too big to cover everything. But as you can see, we have data on dividends, profitability, income statements, balance sheets, cash flows, and even technicals. And now, guys, it's finally time to take a look at some technical analysis tools. So now we once again want to go up to products and press, press on super charts right here. And right now we are once again looking at NVIDIA. And now the first technical analysis tool I want to show you guys is the trend line tool. To find the trend line, you go up here to where it says trend line tools and you simply press on this one right here called trend line. Let's actually zoom out a bit here to get a broader perspective. To draw out a trend line, what you basically do is that you press on one point on the chart and then you press on another point. And as you can see, a trend line will be drawn. And we can use the trend line tool for multiple different purposes here. But the most obvious purpose, I would say, is to use the trend line tool to draw out trends. And here, as you can see on the chart, I zoomed back a bit. Here, you can see that it looks like we have a pretty clear some sort of downtrend, right? In simple terms, a downtrend is when we're printing consecutive lower highs, while at the same time printing consecutive lower lows. And we can use the trend line tool here to sort of try to define this trend. So here we have the sort of resistance of this downtrend. And what we then can do is that we can press on the trend line, click Control C and then Control V to copy the exact trend line. We can drag it to the low of the trend. And now we have something known as a trend channel. And as you can see, after the trend channel broke down here, this was actually the beginning of a new strong trend towards the upside. Another way to use the trend line tool is to use the tool to find patterns in the market. So for example, right here on the chart, we can see that it looks like the price is sort of moving sideways here. And it looks like we're bouncing at the around same level. And we're also finding selling pressure here at the around same level. This kind of price movement is what is known as a trading range. And we can once again use the trend line tool here to draw out the range. If you want this trend line to be straight, what you do is that you press on shift. So as you can see, when I hold on shift, this will be a straight line. So we can draw out the range like this. And then once again, we can copy this one and drag it down here. And now, as you guys can see, we have a visual representation of the trading range. If we look up a bit here, we can once again see that right here, Nvidia found yet another type of resistance. So once again, we can use our trend line tool to drag this resistance out. The next tool I want to show you guys is a tool used to find something called support and resistance. And to find this tool, we once again want to go up here where it says trend line tools. And we want to go down here and press on the horizontal line. And if you press anywhere on the chart, you can see that a horizontal line appears. To make another line, you once again go up here and press on it, and then you press anywhere on the chart and another line will appear. And how do we use the horizontal line? Well, as I said, it's the most common tool used for support and resistance. So if we go back here to the trading range we talked about earlier, instead of using the trend line, we can use the horizontal line and simply tap right here for the resistance and tap right here for the support. And as you guys can see, when the price broke above this resistance, we actually saw a massive move towards the upside. 
Another thing you need to know about support and resistance is that many times when the price breaks a resistance, like we for example did right here, you can see we had resistance one time, two time, three time, then the price broke this resistance, but eventually you can see that we actually came down and tested this previous resistance as support. You can see we had a bounce right here, a pretty strong bounce. So this is one of the main use cases of the horizontal trend line tool. But here, and this is very important, you know, support and resistance levels in real markets, they don't tend to be perfect lines, like for example, right here. As you can see, for example, right here, you can see that the price went below the support right and then pushed above. And that's because in real markets, these support and resistance levels will more often look like zones. So now I want to show you guys the tool that I use to draw support and resistance. And to open this tool, you actually want to navigate down here to where it says geometric shapes. You want to press on this button down here, and then you want to go down where it says rectangle and press on this one. Now to draw out the rectangle, you simply draw it like this. And here I have been customizing my rectangle a bit. To do this, you simply press on this one. You go up here to where it says settings. And here you can, for example, change, you know, how thick the border of the rectangle is. You can choose to have a middle line or not. And you can also choose to have a background or not. So feel free to customize this tool as you like, and then go down here and press OK. But yeah, this right here is the tool I prefer to draw my support and resistance. So if we once again go back here to the range for NVIDIA, I would probably draw out this resistance, something like this. And perhaps I would draw the support, something like this. What I like to do here is that I like to include, you know, as many touches as possible here on the support. So I might actually make this one a little bit bigger here to actually include, you can see this touch as well. But now the next tool I want to show you guys is called the Fibonacci retracement tool. And to find the Fibonacci retracement, we head here to where it says GAN and Fibonacci tool. We press on this button and then we press on Fib retracement right here. And to draw the Fib retracement, you press on one point on the chart, you drag it down and then you press on another point on the chart. And as you can see now, multiple lines and numbers will appear here on the chart. And you may of course wonder, what does these numbers actually mean? Well, this one right here basically stands for 100%. This 0 0.786 basically stands for 78.6%. This number right here, which is a very common number and important number that I will talk about more soon, 0 0.618 stands for 61.8%. And now we might, of course, wonder, you know, how do we use the Fibonacci tool? Well, this is actually a pretty big topic and I do have a full, almost one hour long course about the Fibonacci tool. So I will make sure to leave a link to that video somewhere up in the corner here. But in super, super simple terms, what we do with the Fibonacci tool here is that we are anchoring the Fibonacci tool from the low of a swing move. We drag it up to the high of a swing move just like this. And as I said, don't worry if you don't know what a swing move is and so on and so on. This right here is basically a swing low, this is a swing high, and you can learn more about that in my uh, Fibonacci course here on the channel. So, but in very simple terms, when we find a swing move right here, after the swing move, the price will retrace, which is basically when the price moves in the opposite direction of the swing move. And the most common area where the price will reverse before the next swing move towards the upside is this area right here in between the 0 0.382 level, which stands for 38.2% and the 0 0.618 level, which stands for 61.8%. And in this case, you can see that the price went up. We went down here just below the 0 0.382 before the price reversed for the next strong move towards the upside. All right guys, so now it's finally time to take a look at trading indicators. And this right here is a topic that I can spend, you know, hours and hours talking about. But in this video, let's just quickly go over some of the best and most important indicators here. 
And to do this, let's actually switch up the chart a little bit. So remember to change the chart, we go up here to the upper left corner. Um, currently we're looking at Nvidia, but let's just switch the chart here. Let's for example, search for Tesla. And remember here, we want to search for the ticker symbol. The ticker symbol for Tesla is TSLA. So now let's go down and open up the chart. And now guys, let's open up our first indicator. To open up an indicator, you wanna head up here to the indicators tab. So we wanna press right here. And then you can see if you go down to where it says technicals, you can see that we have tons of different uh, indicators here in TradingView. All of these indicators are indicators that are made by TradingView. But if you go down here to where it says community, you can also see that we have tons of different indicators that are made by the TradingView community. And this is one thing that I really, really like about TradingView. You have tons of different, uh, you know, some of these indicators are super cool. Uh, and all of these indicators are made by other traders and they publish the indicators here on TradingView. So if you, for example, click on top here, you can see the most popular indicators of all time. For example, the squeeze momentum indicator, a custom MACD, and an indicator that finds market bottoms right here. But for now, I want to start by showing you guys one of my favorite indicators. And this indicator is called RSI. So search for RSI here, and you can see that multiple indicators appears where it says technicals here. These are the built in indicators. And you can also see here that we have tons of different community indicators that are based on the RSI. But for now, we just wanna open up the normal RSI indicator, which stands for Relative Strength Index. So you want to open up this indicator right here. And now, as you can see, the RSI indicator has appeared here on the bottom of our chart. And now the first thing I want to do with the RSI indicator is to make the indicator a bit more clear. So I wanna go down here to the bottom left corner and I wanna press on settings. Then I wanna move over to the style tab right here. And here you can customize the RSI to look exactly you know, how you want. What I usually do here is that I change the color of the RSI to black. And so you guys can see it more clearly. I wanna make the line thicker as well. And here you have something called an RSI based moving average. Uh, this is something some traders use. I don't use this one. Uh, I will return to that later why, uh, but I don't use this one. So I uncheck this one. And I also like to uncheck here where it says RSI background fill. I think this makes the RSI more clear and easier to read. So these are the basic settings I have right here. So now we're ready to go down and press okay. So now you might of course wonder, what does the RSI indicator measure? What does the RSI indicator tell us about the price? Well, you can see that we have a line here that sort of goes up and down. And this line right here basically measures the momentum of the price. And what do I mean by momentum? Well, momentum is basically how fast and how sharp the price movements are. So if we, for example, take a look at this price movement right here, you can see that during this period, the price moved up very quickly and in a very sharp manner. And this type of price movement will lead to high readings on the RSI. So you can see when we see these kinds of price movements, the RSI will be very high. And the opposite is also true. So let's take a look at you know a low RSI, for example. Let's zoom in a bit here. You can see that right here, we had a very, very sharp movement towards the downside. You can see this part right here. You can see where we have space here between the low of the previous candle and the high of the next candle. This right here is actually what we call a gap. And this means that from one day to the next day, we saw a very strong uh, decrease in the price. You can see for this previous candle, it closed all the way up here but where the next candle opened was actually all the way down here. So this is a very sharp price decline, and this will lead to very low readings on the RSI. And as I mentioned earlier in this course, when the RSI is above this line right here, which is the RSI value of 70, we say that the price is overbought, and when the price is below 
this line right here, which is the 30 value of the RSI, we say that the price is oversold. So the price was oversold right here, right here, and right here, while it was clearly overbought right here. And to master the RSI indicator takes lots of time and practice. And I actually have a full course on the RSI indicator. So I will make sure to link that video somewhere up in the corner of this video and I highly recommend to check it out after this course. But all right, so now let's open up our next indicator. So let's once again head up here to the indicators tab and the indicator I want to show you guys now is called a moving average. And once again, when you search for moving average, you can see that we have tons of different types of moving averages. We have both moving averages created by TradingView and also tons of moving averages created by the community. But for now, I want to show you guys the most simple moving average and it has a pretty simple name because it's called the simple moving average. So let's click on this one right here, moving average simple. And as you guys can see, now a line has appeared here on the chart, a blue line. And the very first thing we need to do here is to change a few settings. To change the settings of the moving average, you go up here to the upper right corner and you press on the settings tab right here. The first option you can see here for inputs is the length option right here. And what does length of nine mean here? Well, what this means is basically that the simple moving average will calculate the average price over the last nine days. And for this, a nine moving average is a very sort of short term moving average. Some of the more common types is the 50 moving average, which means that it, it will base its calculations on 50 days. Another common one is the 100 uh, day moving average. And another one is the 200 day moving average. For this example, let's use a length of 100. And because we are on the daily time frame, right? Remember, every candlestick represents one day. This means that the moving average will base its calculations on 100 days. But if we, for example, change the time frame to the one hour time frame instead, this would mean that the moving average will base its calculations on the last 100 hours instead. And for now, you don't have to worry about the other settings like source and offset. But what I do want to do here is that I do want to go to the styles tab here. Uh, if you want to, you can change the color. I'm going to keep it at blue. But what I'm do going to do here is that I'm going to make the line thicker here so you guys can see it more clearly, just like that. And now we're ready to go down and press OK. So now let's zoom out a bit here. What does the moving average tell us about the price? Well, if we look at any point in the market, let's say that we're looking at the moving average right here. This basically means that at this point in the market, the average price over the last 100 days was around 220. But how does traders use the moving average to trade? Well, here different traders have different methods. Some traders will use the moving average to find out the overall trend of the market. So for example, when the moving average is moving down, like from this point to this point, many traders will see this as a downtrend. While when the moving average is moving up, like it currently is, many traders will see it as an uptrend. So that is just one simple thing that some traders use. Another a method people use with moving averages is that some traders will see it as the support and resistance. So for example, you can see that the price tapped the moving average right here. It pretty much acted as resistance. Once again, resistance. Then the price broke above here. And now it kind of looks like the moving average flipped to become support in the future. However, this is not something I use and I don't really find uh, lots of value in that specific method because you know many times you know, the support and resistance will not hold, for example, you know, right here, you can see right here. I don't really see this as a reliable method, but this is how some traders use the moving average. But you can also, of course, use multiple moving averages at the same time. So let's say we want to open up another one. We go to the indicators tab, we search for moving average. Let's open up another simple moving average and let's go here and change the settings. So for this one, let's choose a 50 day moving average 
and so you guys can see it more clearly let me change the color to purple and let's also make it a little bit bigger so now on the chart we have two moving averages at the same time we have a 50 day and a 100 day and some traders will actually use these sort of crosses like right here and like right here as signals but all right so now let's open up the next indicator so let's once again here head up to the indicators tab and what we now want to search for is macd m a c d and as always you can see that we have tons of indicators made by the community here but the indicator i want to show you guys is the one at the top called moving average convergence divergence so let's open this one up and as you guys can see now the macd indicator has appeared here on the chart and what i now want to do is that i actually want to make this indicator a full screen and to do this you want to go down to the bottom right corner and press on maximize right here and as you guys can see this indicator basically consists of three things first of all we have a blue line this right here is called the macd line we also have an orange line right here, which is called the signal line. And last but not least, you can see this sort of mountains like this one right here and the valleys. These two are called histograms. And once again, guys, in this course, I don't really have the time to dive super deep into the MACD indicator. I actually already have a full course about the MACD, so I will make sure to link that video somewhere up in the corner. But basically, the MACD indicator consists of moving averages. The MACD line right here is a short-term moving average minus a long-term moving average, and the signal line here is actually a moving average of the MACD line itself. And the histograms, so the mountains and valleys, are basically the difference here between the lines. I can maybe show you guys real quick. So for example, when the blue line is above the orange line, like we for example see right here, you can see that we have a sort of mountain. And if you look right here, when the orange line is above the blue line, you can see that we have a valley. Now let me actually minimize this indicator for a while. Because you may wonder, you know, what does the MACD indicator measure? Well, the MACD indicator also measures momentum, just like the RSI indicator. However, it measures momentum in a slightly different way. So you will get slightly different signals from the MACD compared to the RSI. But just as with the RSI, you can see that when we see strong and sharp price movements, remember, strong and sharp price movements indicates momentum. When we see sharp movements like right here, you can see that we will have strong readings on the MACD. And the opposite here is of course also true. So when we, for example, have sharp and strong movements here towards the downside, this will lead to low readings here on the MACD. But all right, so now guys, I want to mention something we haven't really talked about in this video yet, and that is time frames. So far in this course, we have only been looking at the daily time frame, which means that every single candlestick here on the chart represents one day. But if you want to change the time frame, let's say that we want every single candle to represent one hour instead. What we want to do here is that we want to go up to the upper right corner. We want to press on this button where it says time interval. And as you guys can see, multiple, multiple different time frames will now appear. So you can see you can have all the way down to seconds. So the, um, the candles here can be only seconds if you are a very short term trader. But you can also have much longer time frames like every candle can be one week or even months here. But let's actually change the time frame here so one candlestick represents one hour. So let's press on one hour right here. So now on the chart, instead of daily candles, every candlestick here now represents one hour. And the great thing here is that the indicators we have on the chart, so right now we have both uh, a MACD indicator and we also have a moving average, the indicators we have on the chart will automatically adjust to the time frames we are using. So if you, for example, take a look at the MACD indicator, you can see that recently we had a sharp, strong movement towards the downside, and this leads to a strong negative reading here on the MACD. And remember, the moving average we currently have on the chart is a 100 period moving average. So now this moving average represents the average price 
of the last 100 hours. But now let's say we want to change the time frame to something lower. Let's say that we want the time frame to be one minute. So we go up here once again and we press on the one minute time frame. Now we need to zoom in on the MACD indicator a bit here and zoom in on the price. But now every single candlestick will represent only one minute of price action and our moving average, which is a 100 period moving average, will now represent 100 minutes. But all right then, so now I want to show you guys a tool that you can use to practice your trading, and that is the replay mode. The replay mode basically allows you to go back in time to simulate a live trading environment. And this tool is great for, you know, both beginners that just want to practice their trading, but it's also a good tool for more advanced traders that want to practice their trading strategies. And to access the replay mode, you want to go up here to where it says replay. It says bar replay. So I want to press right here. And then as you can see, a blue line will appear here on the chart. This blue line allows you to go back to any point in the market. So let's say that we want to go back to, you know, let's go back quite a bit. We want to go back to this point right here. Then we simply press right here. And as you can see, now the market will go back in time to that specific point. And now let's actually zoom in a bit here. Now to sort of replay the market, you can either press on this button right here where it says forward. So every time you press forward here, you can see a new candle will appear. You can also play out the market data using a certain speed. So at this button where it says 10x, you can see right now the playback speed is 10x, but you can choose another speed. Uh, let's say we want to use three uh, candles or three updates here per second. We basically press on 3x here and then we press play. So right now you can see that the market is playing out exactly how it played out in the past. And you can basically use this to practice, you know, for example, let's pause the market right here. So you can pause the market at a certain point and then make your analysis. So do you think the market will go up, go down, or perhaps this will not be enough information to take a trade? That is one thing that is important to mention. When it comes to trading, especially when you're using technical analysis, most of the time in most markets, you will actually not see trading opportunities. Technical analysis is a lot about finding the few moments in the market where you actually have a trading edge. And this requires patience to wait for the right moment. But all right, so now to exit the replay mode, you basically once again press on replay right here. It says, do you want to exit? And then you press yes. So now we are back here at the latest market update. But all right, so now last but definitely not least, let's take a look at stock brokers. So far, we have been going over some basic tools to analyze charts, whether it's technical or fundamental analysis, but to actually buy or sell a stock, you need a stock broker. A stock broker is basically a service or platform that helps you buy or sell stocks. And here you basically have two options. You can either use a stock broker that is separate from TradingView. For example, since I'm from Sweden, I'm personally using a Swedish broker called Avanza. So when I'm trading, I'm basically having, you know, TradingView on one screen, I have my broker on another screen. So I have one platform where I do my analysis and one platform where I actually place buy and sell orders. But the second option here is to actually use a stock broker that you can connect to TradingView. So now let's quickly take a look at how you can do this. To do this, what you want to do here is that you want to go down right here where it says trading panel. So you want to click on this one. And as you can see, now multiple brokers will appear here. And you may of course wonder which of these brokers can I use to trade stocks and are the brokers available in my country and so on and so on. Well, one broker which is available pretty much globally and also has stocks are interactive brokers right here. So this is definitely a solid option. Another option right here is TradeStation. And also, if you are not confident in trading with real money yet, TradingView actually has a tool that is called paper trading. And paper trading is basically a practice tool where you use fake money to place trades in TradingView. 
so that you can practice without the risk of losing money. But now then, let's actually dive a little bit deeper. So let's go down here and click on Explore Brokers right here. As you can see here, we have some stats. We almost have 700,000 accounts connected using TradingView. And here you can see, you know, the live orders that people are, you know, trading all the time. But since this is a stock trading course, let's, let's actually go down here and press on stocks because we want to have a broker that actually has stocks. So here we have a few examples. You can, for example, see that we have TradeStation that I already mentioned and we have interactive brokers. So my suggestion here is basically to go over the brokers and see which broker fits best for you. So for example, the very first thing you want to look out for is of course that the broker is available in your country. And another important aspect to look out for is that you want as low trading costs as possible. So for example, here on interactive brokers, you can see that the trading costs are low. And to dive even deeper here, you can press on learn more to learn more about the trading platform. So for example, here for interactive brokers, you can see that it's available in over 200 countries. Right here, you have the exact information about the fees. And you can also scroll down a bit here to look at reviews from other TradingView users. But yeah, choosing your broker is an important decision. So I definitely recommend it to actually take some time and research the brokers here. As I said, uh, key things to look out for is of course, first of all, that it's available in your country. Definitely look out for fees. And also look out for the actual platform and tools within the platform. So is the platform easy to use and user friendly or is it more complicated? All of these factors are important when it comes to choosing the right broker. All right, so this video is coming to an end very soon. But first, I want to thank you all so much for watching. I also want to give a big, big thank you to all our channel members. You guys make these videos possible. To support the channel, consider becoming a member by clicking join or simply drop a like on the video. And last but not least, when you are ready to continue your trading journey, I highly recommend checking out this playlist. It contains all the educational trading courses I have made so far and more is coming very soon.